The problem of Nigeria is caused by the IMF and the World Bank. Many people think it's corruption, but ask yourself, who created corruption? Corruption was created by the IMF and World Bank using the instrumentality of aid and conflict and privatization to dissolve the, the, the sovereignty of countries. That's why IMF created corruption. And corruption cuts across. It's becoming virus. And that's why the description, the best description for the problem of Nigeria right now, it's not corruption, it's not a constitution, it's not any of those shuns. The best description of it will be one word, colonial virus disease. Because corruption cuts across every sector of the Nigerian economy, of the Nigerian state, of the Nigerian life. Corruption everywhere. Corruption in religion, corruption in education, corruption in, in media, corruption in comedy, corruption in entertainment, corruption in football, corruption in, in, corruption in movies, corruption everywhere. Corruption everywhere. So if you look at the symptom, which corruption is, alone to treat the problem, you'll be misdiagnosing and mistreating and the problem will persist. That's why the problem has persisted. Despite the presence of EFCC, the presence of the uh, Bureau for uh, the Code of Conduct Bureau and all that, despite all of those, you still have corruption because there's something that is causing it. And that thing that is causing it is the colonial virus disease. It is a system that is put in place to use corruption to divide and conquer Nigeria through the, the principle of conflict of interest. See, I said it before, I will say it again. National Association of Resident Doctors are on strike right now. ASU is planning to go on strike right now. All of these are able to happen because the politician or the political class are able to send their children and themselves and their family abroad for medical treatment. They are able to send themselves and their family and their friends to abroad for education. They are able to save money abroad and buy properties abroad like Festus Kayamo did. They are able to do these three things. So far as they are able to do these three things, we cannot have a corruption-free economy. We cannot have a developing country. We will continue to be a consumption country and not a production country. So one of the things that will help Nigeria to leave the path of consumption and put Nigeria on the path of production will be for Nigeria to do what? To enact these three laws. So join us in enacting these three laws. We can force the National Assembly to do it. You saw what the labor Nigerians did when labor protested at the gates of the National Assembly. We can go there. We can flood their public hearings. We can force the hands of the legislators, our legislators, particularly the Labour Party legislators, opposition party legislators, the SDP legislators. We can force their hand write this bill for them if they will not write it themselves and force them to tender this bill. We'll monitor the bill all through the hearing, first, second, third hearing, committee stage and all that and force and protest if the president does not sign it into law. We can push this bill into being unless we have this bill, unless there's a ban on these politicians from doing these three things, Nigeria will never develop. So join in. We need your contributions. We need your financial contributions. It's you can contribute and support us. There's details in the description. And then we need your physical contributions we couldn't, because we need people to also write and draft these things if the legislators will not draft it. We need people to push letters to their representatives because we need to send letters to them, send emails to them, right? Bombard them. You need to get involved. You cannot sit on the sideline and expect that Nigeria will be better. No single person, and Peter Obi used to say, that's one of the things I like about him, that he's not the one running for president, it is we running for president through him. Until we realize the fact that we have responsibility, there's, there's a lot for us to do. We need to get involved in enacting these three laws so that we can get Nigeria out of the path of consumption into the path of production. Hopefully, when the, ju the judiciary or the, the, the tribunal gives its ruling, we can then have Somebody like Peter will be at the helm of affairs to actually now spearhead all of this. But we have to kickstart it. Like Peter will be, we say, you cannot wait for uh, restructuring the constitution before you start feeding Nigerians. No. In his interviews during the electioneering campaign process, he kept saying it. That even before, yes, he will restructure. Yes, he will look at the constitution and look at how to... Um, amend the constitution or give us a new constitution but while that process is going on Nigerians have to be alive 
Nigerians have to be alive. You cannot leave your shop pursuing an armed robber. By the time you come back, you will either not catch the armed robber or you come back, you see that the remaining goods in the shop have been stolen. That's what Peter will be said. And that's why it's imperative for us to get involved now. Actively involved. Sign up. There are details in the description. And of course, we need finances to execute these things. We need your support. Details in the description. You need to get involved. Another thing that Nigerians need to do is this. You see, America spends 17% of its annual budget. 17% of its annual budget on social welfare. The social security system of America gulps 17% of America's budget. Bigger than education, bigger than, yes, bigger than education, bigger than health. So if America realizes that the welfare of its citizens should be in the hands of government, we should realize it too. Do you know that the weaponization of poverty in Nigeria is only possible because the welfare of Nigeria is in the hands of politicians. People like Tinubu, people like um, Akpabiu, people like Wike, people like Erufai are able to weaponize poverty, weaponize ignorance, weaponize hunger because the public funds that they have amassed through their shady means, those public funds, they use it to engage in private welfare programs to take care of the welfare of some Nigerians. And they are now able to use those few Nigerians as their soldiers and food soldiers to oppress the rest of the Nigerians. So if we are going to get out of the problem that we are in, if we are going to get out of the situation we are in where you have people who don't really believe in Tunubu, I know many of them and I know you know many of them. Just look around. You will see people who really don't believe in Tinubu, who really don't like what Tinubu is doing, who really don't like what Tinubu stands for. There are many of them out there, but because they are hoping to get contracts, but because they are hoping to benefit from this agri-credit scheme, they lie, they pretend that they are supporting Tinubu, they allow themselves to be used as uh, tools to propagate the propaganda of Tinubu just because of the hopes of what they will get. There are people like that. So if this system continues where you have the likes of the politicians being responsible for the welfare of Nigerians, they will continue to weaponize poverty, weaponize hunger. They will continue to weaponize ignorance. So for us to take care of this, we need to institute Nigeria's own welfare program. We need a social welfare law in Nigeria. Social welfare law that is clearly and explicitly designed and implementable where a governor who does not meet it stands removed from office we can design these laws and force it to be passed we can these are the things that we need to do sitting down and just thinking that okay once we even if tribunal removes tinobu and restates peter will be we still need to sit down and push these things through the national assembly we need to because the IMF and the World Bank will devise another means to use these people, to even frustrate Peter Obi himself. So this is a task that must be done while we await the outcome of the tribunal. So look in the description and do your own part. You must contribute your part. Running to Canada or running to Europe or running to America is not the solution. Running to Singapore, running to Australia is not the solution. In fact, Ask yourself this question, running to these countries, is it not a repetition of what happened during slavery? During slavery, they came, they forcefully took us to go and work in their plantain plantation, their cotton plantation over there as slaves. Is that not what is happening now? Does that not tell you that the problem that we have is not as a result of the corruption that we see on the outside, it's as a result of the same Western powers creating that corruption and causing a situation whereby we are the ones that we now choose ourselves to go and submit ourselves as slaves, working their plantation over there, working their old people's home, working in their mortuaries, working, doing under the desk table, uh, under the table jobs for peanuts and suffering and doing all manner of things over there. Is it not the same thing? So running over to all those places, Jackpa is not a solution at all. Because for starters, they cannot accommodate all of us. They need the best hands of us because their population is aging. So they are luring the best of us to come over there. 
as slaves too. As slaves too. It's only a very few percentage of Nigerians that go out there that actually do well. That actually really, really do well. Yes, we are getting $30 billion in diaspora remittances to Nigeria every year. But guess what? That $30 billion in diaspora remittances is coming from a very few Nigerians. The majority of Nigerians that are in the diaspora are suffering. Majority, and I'm talking about 90%, they are suffering. So the 10% of them are able to do very well to the extent that they are able to do diaspora remittances to the tune of $30 billion every year. That's commendable, but there's a problem. The problem is that the $30 billion that these few Nigerians who make it in the diaspora are able to remit, what do they spend that money on? Because we are a consumption economy, everything is imported. The cars are imported. The chairs are imported. The beauty materials are imported. The food is imported. What happens is that the diaspora money, that $30 billion that is sent into Nigeria, is spent by the people that that money is sent to on the things that are created by the countries that those diaspora remittances are coming from. So the net effect of the diaspora remittances is actually zero. The only way out is for us to institutionalize the welfare of the citizens and that necessitates the enactment of the social welfare law in Nigeria. It necessitates it in addition to the other three laws. And of course, there's a fifth one. We'll talk about that especially in another video. It is the business startup law. 